Investment in green energy projects is rapidly growing as a key element of the global fight against climate change. Invest in Canada is positioning Canada as the best place in the world to advance green energy projects and works directly with global investors to unlock investment opportunities. I sat down at the COP28 talks here in Dubai to talk to Invest in Canada CEO Laurel Broughton. You had a prominent role in law and politics. Tell us a little bit about your sustainability experience and how that's impacted your role as CEO of Invest in Canada. Well, thank you. It's been 10 years since I've been at a COP. Um, and last time I was at COP, I was Minister of Environment in Ontario, as you say. And at that time, Ontario had made what has ended up being the single largest commitment um, of, a, of a province uh, in North America, of any jurisdiction in North America, to reduce CO2 emissions, and that was closing our coal-fired plants. Uh, so 10 years ago, uh, when I was at COP, uh, it was really championing the role that we were taking as government. Interesting, now 10 years later, in a different role as CEO of Investing Canada, which is Canada's investment attraction and promotion agency, to be here alongside business leaders who are really taking uh, a, a real leadership role when it comes to driving sustainability. And that's what we're doing at Invest in Canada. We're here looking for those companies who are taking those leadership roles around the world, highlighting Canada's leadership and trying to put those things together uh, as Canada continues to be, um, I think, a driver of sustainability um, and a creator of solutions for Canada and the world. And there's so many investment opportunities out there right now because as soon as there's a challenge, obviously there, there come opportunities as well. And investment is, of course, you know, it's you know the investment of the century, some people are saying as well, of course. So how exactly are global companies looking to invest then? Well, global companies are really looking around the world and they are looking for jurisdictions where they will be able to um, drive a sustainability agenda. So what do they need for that? Um, one thing they need is green energy, green electricity. Uh, so 83% of Canada's electricity is non-emitting sources. So that's really important, especially as we get into um, scope one, two, three um, disclosures and evaluations, you really need to say, you know, what are your inputs into your system? So that's critical. Uh, we also have significant, amazing talent, a strong regulatory system, uh, strong and progressive government. Uh, you know, so all of those pieces are the considerations that businesses have. Um, they want to be in an environment where they will have like-minded entities around them. And so in the past number of years, Canada's been able to build on to what we already had uh, in terms of the strong drivers and um, you know, si significant advanced manufacturing and work with those businesses to support them to be the new modern advanced manufacturing. So Canada has been significantly sort of in the past, it's been very much an oil and gas producer. That's sort of, you know, what it's been known for. However, the, the government has pledged net zero by 2050, quite an ambitious target there. So why is clean energy right now such an important priority? Well, there's no doubt, as I said, clean energy, uh, Canada has been an energy powerhouse for many, many years. And, uh, you know, I grew up in Western Canada, so I know, uh, you know, I've seen firsthand uh, what's taking place and our agency works across the country. Energy producers, for example, are aggressively moving to uh, find ways, such as through carbon capture and storage, to modernize their approach to drive towards sustainability. Um, and I think that's an example of what we're seeing across the board in terms of the innovators, the creators are coming out of industry looking for solutions. So if I think about what has been happening in Canada, in addition to an energy transition, which is moving now to green hydrogen, some of the world's leading uh, green hydrogen projects uh, for expert uh, around the world being developed on the Atlantic coast hydrogen fuel cells uh, in British Columbia, uh, some of the significant for long-haul long trucking, those are solutions that we need to have. 
electric vehicles and the battery supply chain end to end. In the last two years, Canada has really begun to build a significant battery supply chain and we've seen historic investments coming into Canada. Northvolt, who will be building the greenest battery uh, in the world out of Canada. Uh, we have LG Stellantis, um, Volkswagen, many other uh, companies coming in to Canada to be part of what historically has been um, a uh, traditional vehicle manufacturing industry, now moving to be an electrical vehicle industry. Even different tires are needed for that industry. So you're right, there's lots of opportunity for businesses to be part of this historic uh, transition. I think an industrial revolution we've had, this is a green industrial revolution. Everything needs to shift over. So what does Canada offer these global companies when they're looking to sort of move into this energy, this green energy transition? So one thing our organization does at Invest in Canada is we really uh, serve as uh, a concierge, a guide as you're coming into Canada. We'll have you meet uh, those uh, those who you need to in terms of whether they'd be in the federal government to understand for example the clean tax credits the hydrogen tax credits that are available for industry to build this new future that we're all trying to build together that would be one example uh, talking about you know where how would you find a site who would you need to talk to so that's really the example of what we do uh, to help that transition be easy and to help businesses and, and industrial partners find what is perhaps a second home in Canada to build their operations. Well, it sounds like there's a huge energy transition happening over in Canada. Very, very impressive indeed. So why are you looking for foreign investment then? FDI is critical for us to be able to uh, really meet the challenge that's before us. I mean, it's exciting that we're here uh, at COP having this conversation, but we all understand and appreciate the urgency of this transition. And so for us, for example, as we sit on, um, you know, the, one of the only countries that has uh, a stable environment, a progressive regulatory regime that has all of the critical mi minerals uh, that you would need in a quantity that you would need to be able to drive that development, we feel it's really incumbent on us in Canada to be able to get those minerals out of the ground and get them into the electric vehicles where they're needed and into the battery supply chain. So that's an example of where FDI is so critical um, because you do need financial resources to be able to build these new infrastructures. You know, I think sometimes we thought that this transition would be easy, but why would it be easy? The first industrial revolution wasn't easy, but the difference is now we're changing from what we have in society to a new model and we really need to you know drill back down and dig in and get these entire supply chains built out um, and so that's a big part of what FDI uh, does when you're trying to build out this new this new structure. So my last question is you know you've got Canada committing to net zero by 2050 so how is Invest in Canada aligning with this vision? So everything that we're doing at Invest in Canada is aligned with a sustainability agenda. And that really goes through a broad range. And I think those that walk around uh, this COP28 will see the vast diversity of industries that are here. So areas that we are focused on, we've talked about electric vehicles and that supply chain. We've talked about hydrogen. We've talked about um, other forms of manufacturing, advanced manufacturing. Uh, you know, also alternative proteins and some new forms of um, investments in the agri-industry are critically important. Uh, life science is here right now and, and they're driving a sustainability agenda. So as we look at everything that we're doing, we take a lens at Invest in Canada. One, making sure we bring investments across the country into Canada. Two, that they're aligned with government priorities and we have uh, a policy uh, minds to mobility so that would be an example of one uh, that we're looking at to make sure that we do our part to bring in the players to Canada to meet our innovators and already existing enterprises and help make sure that we're able to meet the needs um, and Canada is an exporting jurisdiction we have free trade agreements uh, with 51 countries around the world 15 various agreements and that allows us to have uh, companies from the around the world come to Canada, make a second home, build their operations, and then export. And so I think Canada sees itself as a, a policy leader when it comes to, to environmental sustainability, a change agent, 
um, and also uh, someone that can deliver and provide those solutions to the world to help others be able to respond to the reality that we're all facing right now. Well, we cannot thank you enough for joining us here today. A fantastic update as to exactly what's going on over in Canada and uh, the brilliant things you're doing at Invest in Canada as well. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you very much.